Hello everyone, welcome to Cornwall and Andy's Cornish Creations. In this video I'm going to be taking this old ball peen hammer and um, I'm going to spruce up the head and give it a polish and, uh, and the handle, I'm going to give it a new handle because this one's a bit damaged at the top and um, I'm going to make the handle out of uh, paddock and oak. Here I'm just using a, uh, a wire brush uh, removed the uh, bulk of the dirt and then I'm using a here I'm using a flipper uh, disc on the grinder to uh, polish up the steel. This is only a sort of a, a rough polish just to get the surface down and then I'll be sort of fine tuning it as I go along. This bar's at six times speed. trying to get all parts of the head down to bare metal. Here I'm using some wet and dry paper to uh, smooth it down. It's speeded up so <laughs> it's, uh, it just looks as though it's shaking but uh, that's me polishing it. And I'm going through the grits until I get down to a, I can't remember which grit it is but it's something like about 2000 grit uh, to get a nice uh, smooth finish on ready for polishing on the buffing wheel. A bit of uh, green buffing abrasive and it doesn't take much just to get a nice finish on there and nice and shiny here yeah, I've mounted the uh, the head into the headstock of my uh, wood turning lathe just so that I can what I've finished up with the um, when I was using the flipper disc I finished up putting facets on it rather than getting it nice and smooth so I uh, put it on this so I get a nice smooth finish that's a sharpening uh, steel and now I'm back onto the um, wet dry and down to about 2000 This is a solution called cold blue and it uh, has a chemical reaction with the with the bare steel and turns it uh, sort of a blue blue black color but also has the effect of uh, protecting it against rust so uh, the areas that I'm not going to leave shiny I'm treating with the cold blue and uh, that should stop it, uh, stop it rush, rusting or tarnishing over time, and also gives it a nice, a nice look. It's they use it a lot on on gun barrels and things like that, just to uh, make it look uh, more attractive and protect against uh, rust.
if there's any grease or anything on it it doesn't work so you got you do have to get it right down to the metal and, uh, and keep it clean until you put this stuff on right now we're down to the actual wood turning bit I've got some strips of uh, padouk and two strips of padouk, one strip of oak and uh, I've got some tight bond three and uh, I'm gluing them together and clamping then that will be left overnight to set get a couple more clamps on and uh, through the magic of video here we are the next day well probably not the next day but <laughs> it's had time to set and you can see there at the end I've marked the centre and put a little punch hole in so I could fit it between centres it's quite handy having the uh, oak strip in because it, tell, it sort of lets me know where the centre of the piece is uh, certainly in one dimension change the rest over for a wider rest and what I'm trying to achieve here is um, sort of looking at the handle end on I want a, an oval shape so I'm not turning this fully round I'm just turning it so that um, so that on two sides the uh, the rough wood is is turned away. You'll see what I mean in a minute. It's a bit uh, difficult to explain, but here we are. You see the wood on each side, just a little bit at that end, is uh, is rounded, but where the strip of oak is. It's, uh, it's not been touched yet. I'm just marking the wide points and where it wants hollowing out a bit. And you see there, even at its widest, it's, uh, it's narrower than that piece. So I'm just taking that down to that dimension. I'm using the uh, uh, spindle roughing gouge uh, that I uh, renovated on a previous vid video and uh, it's, a, uh, it's an unusual one, it's not a sort of standard shape roughing gouge but uh, I like this one and there we are, it's, uh, it's the right dimension now to make it oval what I've got to do is make two new um, holes so that I can put it on the lathe off center so I'm coming five millimeters each side of that original hole so what will happen is when I mount it on those uh, secondary holes the, um, the piece will be turning off center and I'll be able to turn the sides down and, uh, and should finish up with a, a, an oval shape and I do this at both ends and there we are mounted on the on the second holes and as you can see it's off center so when I'm turning this I will only be turning one side of the uh, of the shaft and then I have to put it on the on the other holes to turn the other side of the shaft so I've got to complete this side before I uh, move on to the onto the other holes I'll move the tool rust over. I'm not, uh, I don't like working towards the edge of the tool rest in case it slips off. And there 
you see one side is done apart from a little bit narrowing uh, later on so I'm just removing the tailstock I'll pop it onto the opposite holes and that's a sprung loaded uh, drive centre on the, on the uh, headstock end which are really nice for this kind of work because you can locate the hole and then as it tightens up it grips onto the piece and there you see it's offset in the opposite um, orientation up to four times speed and there you see that side is done and it's starting to look nice and oval which is kind of what, what shape you want on a hammer shaft and the other side but I still have got a bit of narrowing because the shaft is narrow sort of on, on both axes so, uh, so I need to narrow this down as well which I'll do on these offset holes so I'll do this one first just narrow that one down to that line that I've just put on and then I'll um, get it nice and even and smooth and then I turn it onto the opposite one again and just narrow down that little bit on that side and there you can see it's a nice sort of ergonomic shape I've put it in the centre again because I've, I have did finish up with some like sharp points on the uh, on the wide point of the shaft here I'm uh, sort of working on the head end hammer head end uh, I've marked the wi widest point and I'm taking the width down to where it fits into the head of the hammer there's a, a limit to what I can do on the uh, lathe now I'm sanding it down from uh, I think it's about a 120 grit I, I got a decent finish on it and it does uh, turn quite nice Paduk. Uh, I'm sanding it with the grain keep it nice and smooth it actually looks quite nice just sanded but I will be putting some uh, some extra finish on it I'm just finishing if, just going to finish the base before I uh, totally finish with the sanding and waxing and I just, just turned it over so it's not sharp on the base and here's some uh, abrasive paste I'm just rubbing it on by hand I don't want a, a mirror shine I just want it nice and smooth and protected and then some wood wax 22 for a final finish and applying a bit of heat and quite often the wood wax 22 I'll, I'll, I'll apply it on the lathe and the, the friction from the lathe turning will produce heat to, uh, to melt the wax uh, but uh, because I'm doing it by hand you haven't got that heat the same amount of heat so I heat it up with the uh, with a, it's a paint stripper an electric paint stripper and then buff it up It is a nice, it's a nice smooth finish, and it's uh, yeah, it has come up not really nice. I like the uh, I like the little strip down the down the middle. It just adds a little bit of something. And 
here I'm using a well, I forget what they call it, it's like a a finger, electric finger file or something like that. But they're quite handy for uh, little projects like this because filing it by hand is a, a bit laborious. And there I'm just doing a bit, trying it on. I need it to go down a bit deeper. And I've got it in the vise, protecting it with a with a rag so I don't damage the handle. A bit of fine tuning and do resort to a hand file. Here I'm, um, I'm putting a saw cut down because I'll be putting a wedge in this and uh, rather than um, rather than just trying to drive the wedge down and it's a lot easier if you've got a saw cut there that will allow the wedge to go in. is a little bit of a sloppy fit this it's uh, I just got a little bit carried away it's really difficult because the inside of the head where the wood fits it's uh, it's not sort of parallel Oop, there's ivy and um, so you to get it to go in it, it almost inevitably finishes up uh, a little bit on the sloppy side uh, but uh, it's nothing that can't be fixed and the wedge will uh, open this up certainly to the sides and my intention was to put some uh, metal wedges in the opposite way but I hadn't got any here so uh, and it's not really necessary the, the wooden wedge will suffice any excess glue off just get a final tap just make sure the heads in the right position and that's that's good and firm I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. Sand over the top, and I did actually with a little gap, so I did uh, cut some little tiny wedges of paddock and uh, and whacked them in there just to just to tidy it up. You can see one of the little wedges at the side there, and uh, that's a bit of uh, abrasive paste and uh, just a little little hand sand and then a little bit of wax on the top just to finish it off squiggy rub Okay, so there you have it. One ball peen hammer um, restored, polished the head up, and uh, put a new handle on it, and uh, a bit of a fancy handle. It's nice and slim there, and it's uh, sort of an oval shape, which I did on the lathe. 
and it's got the, um, a slice of oak running through the middle of it just to give it a bit of interest really it doesn't need it but it's just a, a bit of a novelty but a really nice really nice finish on it uh, you can still see the holes on the end but I'll not bother with those because it uh, it's a hammer at the end of the day but uh, yeah it's all finished off really nice and uh, this is probably something that I'll use um, uh, and it's a nice thing to have anyway hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it that thumbs up uh, share and all those other things and okay the battery just died on me <laughs> Um, where were I? Yes, please leave, leave a comment. I do uh, enjoy um, reading them and I do try to reply to them all. Um, anyway, from a... Uh, it's been a mixed bag this weekend. We've had wind, rain, even a bit of sunshine and it's fairly mild at the moment. But uh, from here in Cornwall, this is Andy Paramore and his Cornish creations and I'll See you on the next one. Goodbye. Yes, thank you for watching it right through to the end. And if you can, do check out some of my other videos.